pretty much everybody thought we'd seen our last Michael Bay Transformers movie, mostly because everyone involved, including Michael Bay, kept saying, no, for real, this is the last one after Dark of the Moon. Well, it turns out pretty much everybody was wrong, as this past week, Paramount Pictures announced that the inevitable fourth Transformers movie will be something akin to a reboot, in that the Transformers themselves will be the only returning characters, and the storyline may not involve any of the plot threads from the previous three films. None of the original human cast have been signed to return, but Michael Bay has. I took this about as well as you can expect. How did we get here? Well... The Byzantine ins and outs of production financing and the corporate structure of the Hollywood studio system are weird. Okay, basically Michael Bay, who clearly is no great fan of his Transformers movies either, has been trying for most of this decade to branch out into the dark comedy genre via a movie project called Pain and Gain, a fact-based caper story with The Rock and Mark Wahlberg as steroid-abusing, dimwit Miami bodybuilders who get wrapped up with organized crime. But so far, no studio has wanted to make the film. Until just now, when Paramount Pictures finally said yes. Why Paramount? Why now? Well, officially, because they just really want to make that movie. Unofficially? Who knows? But the Transformers movies are basically paying all of Paramount's bills at this point, now that their partnership with Marvel Studios has shifted over to Disney, and Bay agreeing to come back and do whatever it is he does that makes Nimrod Nation keep showing up for the Transformers movies probably didn't hurt the deal. So, yeah, strap yourself in, kids. We get to do this one more time. Now, the temptation is to take the studio publicity seriously when they call what is clearly just a sequel with new actors a reboot, yeah, and start getting hopeful that maybe this time they'll get it right. I mean, it could happen, couldn't it? No more LaBeouf, that's a good start, right? And they're already saying this one will focus more on the robots in action instead of the humans in the bad comedy. I mean, sure, they said that last time and it didn't happen, but maybe this time they really meant it, right? I mean, those War for Cybertron games get it pretty much right, and those sell really well, so maybe... No! At some point, even Transformers fans who've learned to live with a lot of crap in their day have to give up the ghost on this stuff. They're not gonna make the movie the fans want to see. partially because it's kind of up in the air exactly what the fans want to see is, but mostly because there's zero reason for them to do so. The Transformers movies have been making gobs of money hand over fist for the better part of a decade now. That's why they seem to have gone out of their way to get Michael Bay back. Why would they change up the formula now? In many ways, geek culture has gotten spoiled by all the attention that Hollywood has been lavishing on it as of recent, to the extent that too many have managed to forget that they still don't represent anything close to a majority of the audience for these things, and more tragically, that the majority of the audience seems to actively want these movies to suck, though maybe not in those exact words. Yes, you or I may care about getting the characters right, or respect for the material, or being a good movie, but most of the audience doesn't. Most of the audience, at least judging by the box office, just seems to want to watch generically attractive non-actors dive out of the way of gasoline pyro fireballs while tossing off monosyllabic one-liners as background noise for their weekend popcorn binge intermittently interrupted by a volley of texting. In fact, it's a pretty good rule of thumb that the larger the audience a film is trying to reach, the dumber, broader, and more intellectually watered down it's probably going to be. It's a human paradox. We may be stronger in groups, but we're smarter as individuals. Or as Agent K put it, The person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. And the sad thing is, it's not like we're talking about James Joyce here. We're talking about a low-budget cartoon designed to market a line of repurposed Japanese robot figures. And apparently even that needed to be made dumber to be palatable to a plurality of moviegoers. Think about that, and then consider that we let many of these people operate motor vehicles. I mean, do you realize what a miracle it is when one of these movies actually turns out to be good? Do you realize how close we probably came to a bad version of, say, Lord of the Rings? Did you know that before they gave up and just rebooted the Batman movies, one of the plans for a fifth one was to have Howard Stern play the Scarecrow, opposite either Madonna or Jenny McCarthy as Harley Quinn, who would have been written as the Joker's daughter? Do you appreciate just how astronomically unlikely it seemed, even five years ago, that we'd be poised for an Avengers movie, period? To say nothing of one where Captain America looks like Captain America, the Hulk looks like the Hulk, Thor looks like Thor, Iron Man looks like Iron Man, Black Widow looks like Black Widow, and Hawkeye looks like... like you can't win them all, I guess? So yeah, new Transformers, probably gonna suck as much as the last three Transformers. Sometimes you really can see these things coming, so ease up on the misplaced hopefulness, kids. You're only setting yourself up for another disappointment. I'm Bob, and that's the big picture.